there's been a couple on this topic. The PC party hasn't been as open and collaborative in the last 10 years. How can we, why should we believe this has changed and what have other parties done to ensure they're open? Heather, might as well start with you. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. Well, I think that um, our party has been around for a few years, as many of you know. I think that uh, in this election, we have a, we have over 40 new candidates running across this great province. We have a leader who is talking about doing things differently, and she already has begun to doing things differently, especially with the committee pay issue, and no, no further transition payments, and all MLAs have to pay that money back. And that means taking a stand and not being able to, um, uh, to, to, to to take a stand and do the right thing, as I said before. So I think the leadership of, of our new leader, Premier Redford, there's, there's a change happening. And it's about our future and about uh, the positive nature and moving forward. Uh, well, our party is sort of built on this idea of being open and collaborative, so it actually is, is in everything that we do. But you may want to check out our democratic renewal policy, which has a number of really good ideas, I think, to move us in the right direction. One of being uh, changing the Public Affairs Bureau actually to a Citizens Affairs Center, which would encourage people to be engaged in their democracy rather than just pushing out information. We want to see uh, open and transparent appointments to boards, lower limits for financial uh, donations, full disclosure of donations, including those at a leadership race. I'm looking over at you, Don. Um, and, and a number of different ways, uh, fixed election dates, uh, you know, a, an ombudsman. There are many, many things that we can do to actually help make our government more open and transparent. Thank you. Well, I think part of the reason that the Wild Rose Party began was because we were concerned about 41 years of, of conservative PC, PC leadership where there isn't a lack of transparency, that there is the fear that you somehow would feel some repercussions for not towing the party line. Uh, and so we expect things will be different. Uh, we, we encourage everybody to donate $400 to the party because that makes you publicly account or publicly uh, uh, published and, and uh, we're, we're ready for a change. Well, thank you very much. I think we're talking about uh, opening up the system so as we talked about less uh, apathy and less cynicism and I think we all, all nobody served well when the public feels that way. Uh, one of the things I might point out that we have 47% uh, of our candidates uh, in this provincial election are women so we're coming close to you know involving women in, in a very meaningful way but I think there's just quickly some things that we can do. We have to set limits on election campaign spending. Other problems, even federally, we do. We don't do it provincially. We should require party leadership, leadership candidates to disclose financial contributions. We want to know who's paying for them. We want to ban corporate and union donations to political parties. Set, as I say, set limits on election campaign spending. And one of the things we really, I think, we have to begin to look at is some form of proportional representation uh, in terms of voting. Uh, I think the issue of, of transparency has to do with honesty. And it seems to me that, uh, be, having been in the legislature, I mean, really struggling to understand what the truth is. And, and being under the burden of the, of the fear factor everywhere, that uh, people in all the different departments of the public service are not really willing to provide us with the information and the truth that we need because they're afraid to stand up for what they believe. And then we've seen this with, uh, with the doctors. And uh, I had a nurse phone me a couple weeks ago from the Royal Alex, and she. She said she reported to me, and I, it's an anonymous phone call, so I couldn't follow it up. But she said that uh, a few of her colleagues were dismissed because they were speaking out on behalf of their patients. Uh, well, that's that's ridiculous. I mean, we, we have to uh, move beyond uh, the fear factor that's uh, that's that's uh, prevalent in all the different departments, social workers, uh, uh, and, and just 
Uh, otherwise, how, how do we know what is going on if no one will tell us what's going on? 